This is my beloved son where I am well pleased. Now this is Peter saying I was actually there when Jesus was baptized and God spoke from out of heaven. And we ourselves heard this utterance made from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. This is when he spoke to Elijah and Moses. <laughs> so we have the prophetic word made more sure to which you do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your hearts. But know this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made an act of human will, but men were moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Verse 21 actually just told you how the Bible was written. It said the men wrote when they were moved by God and they didn't do it in their own. So if you're believing in something that you read that's thousand years old, it has to be something deeper in it for you to for it to still work today. Because I can go to my school at PS181 in Brooklyn, New York, and they have some outdated history books. And the outdated history book still has Carter as the president and other people as the president. And when they have these people as a president and tell you stuff that's going on, this stuff is past tense. It don't even work no more. We're not even doing that stuff anymore. But you can read a Bible that's a thousand years older than that. Yes, ma'am. And it's still going on today. So it lets me know if something is going on that God is doing through his word, that as long as I'm reading it, I can stay abreast of what's going on in the world today. And I know that there's a hope in him because if all this stuff is true that's in the word, I know it's true about my life. So if I know what's true about my life, that means that there's bigger, better, greater, and grander things that's going to happen for me. Give me Hebrews chapter 2. This is our foundation. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18. And then after we read 18, we're going to go backwards. We'll start back at verse 10 and read down to 18. Y'all doing good out there? Yes. All right, y'all with me? Yes. He's one way. verse is rough. It makes it rough because it lets me know that Jesus was every sin that was ever created. And he took it on for us. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 18. And I'm going to read this out of the King James Version. It says, For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. New American Standard Version. Same verse, verse 18. It says, For since he himself was tempted, and that which he has suffered, he is able to come in aid of those who were tempted. So let's go back up and then we're going to really go in. For it was fitting for him, this is verse 10. For it was fitting for him for whom are all things and through whom are all things and beginning many sons to glory to perfect the author of their salvation through suffering. For both he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified are all from one father, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. 
saying, I will proclaim your name to my brother, and in the midst of the congregation I will sing your praise, and again I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children whom God has given me. Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise also partaken of the same. Verse 14. Therefore, since the children shared in flesh and blood, meaning since they were human, God himself had to become human to do the same thing. That through death he might render power as him who had power over death. Now, who has power over death? It tells me that is the devil. 15 says, and might free those who through fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives. There is no one in here that before they gave their life to Christ didn't have a thought or fear of dying. Now if you still have that fear now, that's not good. <laughs> Once I read that suit from the body is present with the Lord, I'm good. You know, I'm comfortable. But if you still scared of that, something right. Something right. One more prayer, one more prayer. For assuring he does not give help to angels, but he gives help to the descendants of Abraham. This is here to let you know that there is no salvation for angels. So the devil cannot be saved. <coughs> Therefore he had to be made like his brethren. I had to be made like a man in all things, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For since he himself was tempted in that which he has suffered, he is able to come to aid to those who are tempted. I read in a business article something that was so simple, and the church teaches it. And um, <coughs> there's some people who don't teach it because they don't understand the point of it. And the, and the verse just said that. It says, since he suffered too. And he suffered the same thing you suffered. He's able to help you. So in the business market, they say, don't trust another business person who hasn't been through anything. And they say, don't follow someone that hasn't fallen and hasn't failed in their business. So when they approached Donald Trump and they asked Donald Trump, how did you become such a billionaire? He said, because I've been bankrupt three times. So if there's someone that I'm following and they haven't fallen, they've been perfect the whole time, I can't trust them. Because they don't know what I've been through because they haven't experienced it. And if they haven't fallen like I've fallen, they don't know. They can't sympathize with me. They can only empathize as they only imagine what I'm going through. So their feeling is going to be different towards what I'm going through. So Christ said, I'm going to be everything that sin has to offer so I can fix everything that you failed in. So let's break this down. God comes on the scene, makes earth, makes man, starts the Old Testament. What the Old Testament is, is a will. He starts a will. Anyone need this document? This is Hebrews chapter 7 on it. I'm going to say it so we can get through it faster. All this strength we can't open them up. So. We start the Old Testament. You want to work with me? You want to say So, start the Old Testament, right? Okay. The Old a Testament is a will. There's a will over there, okay, y'all? That's, that's the will that was written out right there. It's on that table. Okay. Adam had it all. But there was something promised in the will. 
And what was promised in the will, Adam was going to get the full of that. You understand that? Now the thing is, he broke covenant with God when he ate of the tree. So he messed up the will. Now the thing is, in order for the will to come in effect, how can you get, how can that will come in effect? Okay, Pastor just said it. That's right. Say it again. Somebody else die. Die. Okay, y'all got it. So, in order for a will to come in effect, someone has to die, don't they? Yes. Mm -hmm. And if that person dies, then the will comes alive. Yes. So, if that person has to die for the will to come alive, if I don't know what's on the will. And I wasn't told the fullness because the Bible says it tells you the fullness. It said, but it it says eyes haven't seen, ears haven't been heard. Y'all heard this verse before, yeah. right? It's, but they don't tell you the next verse. The verse, next verse says, but it's been revealed through the Spirit, through the saints. So it's telling you that there's things that's going to be revealed to you, but you have to understand there's a will for you first. If you don't understand the will, then you're not going to know the purpose of Christ. So Christ has to come because since you messed up, it puts you out of the wheel. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So it's just like that hard-headed pookie yes. that messed up and then your mama get mad and take everybody out the wheel. That's right. So I ain't leaving no Ooh. Negro. No. <laughs> That's right. That's right, Pastor. <laughs> so... <laughs> God got mad and said, I ain't eating them nothing. Everybody out the window. Proof. The flood. I'm going to kill everybody. Everything got to die. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a faithful few to redo this thing again. And when they redo this thing again, it's going to work this time because I got rid of all the bad people. Come on. No. Because now with God knows and understands this, you can't do this thing in yourself. So if I can't do it in myself, I need the Spirit of God working on the inside of me for this thing to work. So I can't kick a habit by myself. I need the Spirit of God. Do you understand? If, thank you. Thank you. Listen, if I didn't come to church and give my life to Christ and understand that He can change things and renew my mind and break me free, I still be talking to the same person I'm talking to. Preach, Pastor. Preach. I still be going with the same people I was going. To. I still be dealing with the same, same people that was on a lower same. level. Come on, Pastor. Because I thought that this is as far as I can go and this is all I can have. Mm, that's good. So now it teaches. So now when the will is destroyed. And the flood is there. No one comes on the scene. And they start reproducing. They still fail. Moses come on the scene. They still fail. Joshua, they fail. The judges come on the scene. Samson. Still fail. Deborah, Barak, they still fail. Okay, they jealous, let's bring a king on the scene. Samuel comes into play. Start bringing prophets on. Let's anoint a king. Let's anoint Sal. Still fell. Okay, let's bring David. Still fell. Let his son be king. Still fell. So let's start having major and minor prophets. Ezra fell. Zephaniah fell. Obadiah fell. <coughs> Jeremiah fell. Isaiah fell. Habakkuk fell. So, these 66 books of the Bible showing you people that's constantly failing over and over and over, and he keeps trying. Then he said, You know what? The only way I'm going to get this thing done right is I do it myself. Do it myself. I'm going to do it myself. Matter of fact, 
I'm going to come there myself and show them how to do it. But I got to come in my image and my spirit because if I come in the way man comes when I'm birthed out, then I'm going to need a savior. So I can't be born through natural birth because if I'm born through natural birth, the sin came from Adam. And if everybody came through the line of Adam, that means that I'm going to have the sin on me. So I have to be born from the Spirit. So the verse in Isaiah 96 says, A son is born, a child is born, but the son is given. Now that's making more sense. So now I'm on the scene and I'm here. And what happened is, I know about the will. And all that time I've been into cartoons and watching cartoons and stuff, I realized that serving God, and he's so different. I used to call him backwards, but he's just different. I remember when Superman, you know, had to beat Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor and uh, Batman had to kill the Joker. Beat the Joker. Now here comes Jesus, and he died to win. Like, now this is backwards. I thought you were supposed to defeat the enemy, then you went. He dies to win. So come here, brother Danny. So what happens is Christ, come up here. And lay on your back, sir. All right, so the people see you on your back. Lay right here. Lay this way, right here. <laughs> No, you're a big Jesus. <laughs> no, not, not I won't go like this, folks. <laughs> okay. And y'all gonna get this because this is powerful in itself. Now, y'all told me earlier how did the will come in effect? Somebody has to die. So when he died, the will came in effect. And the will said, you are free. So when Christ died, the will came in effect, and it frees you. Now, the awesome thing about it is three days later, you can wake up now. You can get up now. It's the third day. <laughs> To make sure you get it. And to make sure you get everything Thank you, God. that he has for you. Everyone standing.